Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to the 58 Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video is going to be doing a little something uh, that's taking out a fragment and pulling up a uh, pulling up a fragment and allowing the user to kind of pull it up as a drawer that's coming up from the bottom. So what I mean by that is actually this is uh, implemented pretty well inside of the maps, okay? So if we actually search for, say, I don't know, like Xamarin or something, notice that this thing pulls up. All right, we get a little bit of a transparency right here. And then the user is actually allowed to pull up and see remaining more content, okay? And then they're actually allowed to pull it back down. And then there it is, okay? So then actually when you exit out, it'll go back down, okay? So we're gonna implement something similar to this, like which we've already probably, um, you guys have seen if you guys have watched the, the other videos, in which we take here and we have the fourth fragment come up from the top or the bottom I'm sorry and then the user is actually able to drag it out okay so we're wanting them to drag it out only about two-thirds but we could have them drag out the whole screen and then we could have them stop it right here but we're gonna let them go all the way back down and then let them animate it back up if they want to see it again okay so we can actually alert this at any point just via code depending on the situation that you want to trigger it but you kind of get the idea of of what's going on here all right so just to kind of give you guys a little reference of, of what uh, what it's used at and many other applications use it, and it's kind of a handy way to kind of bring in more more screen to uh, an always scarce uh, real estate. So let's go ahead and implement that now. Okay, so the, 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 the first thing we're gonna need is we're actually gonna need, of course, a fourth fragment, okay? So let's go ahead and implement our fourth fragment. And then we'll do Android fragment, fragment four. All right, and then we're going to actually make sure that we inherit from the support library, of course. All right, now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to make a fourth fragment XML file. And this is probably, if you've been watching the previous videos on fragments and frame layouts, this is probably getting pretty cumbersome. So that's actually a good thing, right? Cause that means you're getting used to it. So fragment for uh, XML. And what we're going to do here is actually pretty simple. We're not really going to do too much in it and like we're not going to really do anything new. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this over since we're probably pretty used to, to all of it. And all of it is is really a text view inside of a relative layout, another text view, and then of course an image view. All right. So the, the drag me up, the Xamarin is awesome, and then we'll have the image view. So the image view is gonna to need to be added as a, the PNG file is gonna need to be added, which is why it's not rendering right now. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, so it's now in my drawable folder. So now it is being rendered. And let's go ahead and take a look at the source. There's really nothing uh, special going on here. We have a margin top to kind of provide some separation. And then we have a layout center and parent. And the, there's really not really anything else that like you know that's gonna really catch you off guard as far uh, as far as you know kind of like what the heck's going on here so it, it like the most of it's pretty it's like I said it's just a text view text view and an image view and it's just a normal layout so we're gonna treat it as such and then we're uh, we'll drag it up accordingly all right so now what we want to do is and we want to actually go inside of the fragment three okay because remember the fragment four is where it's at but fragment three is actually where it's coming up from remember uh, that's when it drags up from fragment three so what we want to do in fragment three is we actually want to actually add another frame layout so remember frame layouts are kind of like holders for fragments so this fragment can now actually hold it hold a another fragment and what's going to happen is we're going to actually be able to see how we can call a a transaction like how we've been doing inside of the main activity We've been using the transaction and the fragment manager. So we've been doing all this inside the activity, but how do you call a fragment from another fragment? Well, that's what's gonna be another example of how we do that, okay? So we'll see here shortly. And then we'll, we'll call this fragment for container. And then what we can do is do layout width. And then we want it to match parent. And then the, the high is what we'll actually explicitly set and we can actually have a match parent or, or something that would have a really big you want it. But in this case, we'll actually make it a certain size. We'll make it 400 DP. 
and then we're gonna make the we'll we'll make the background actually at the color so that we can actually see it when we're when it's being mocked up in the in the content view. But when it's uh, actually overlaid and when it's actually the fragments actually put into it, fragment four, it's actually going to take take care of it. But just to see um, you know where it's at is kind of helpful. And then the layout gravity we're gonna set into the bottom. Okay, so we'll do bottom. And then we'll do translation Y. Okay, so this one's really important. First, let me go ahead and change this to a frame layout so that we can use the layout gravity. So all that's the layout gravity is doing is making it stick to the bottom. Now the translation Y is what makes it what makes it kind of quote unquote hidden. And what what I mean by that is basically what it what it does is it actually pushes. It's almost like a margin top. And what it does is it pushes it down and basically puts it below the below the screen and the way we can make it hidden is by setting its translation Y to the exact height okay so its height is 400 yet we push it down 400 therefore it's totally in, invisible at that point now in the mock-up it's not gonna it's not gonna let us do that okay so let's go ahead and add that there in the mock-up it's not gonna it's not gonna show that so this is how it's gonna look of course when it's fully expanded However, in the in this part, it's not going to do that. The translation Y has no effect. However, when it's ran, it'll actually be the translation Y will be put into effect and then it'll be gone. Okay, so this won't be showing on runtime until we actually want it to show. All right, guys. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and save it. And then we're going to want to come into our fragment three. And this is where we're going to want to do a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff, right? So we're going to want to first actually want to we want to come back into fragment three, right? And we're going to actually want to add a add a button. The one the button is actually going to trigger the the fragment. So we'll change this text view to a button, and then we'll, of course we'll give it an ID so that we can actually set up a click event. So we'll do app plus ID button fragment four. We'll call it or whatever, and then we'll change the text to click to open fragment four and then just to give it some a little better look we'll, we'll kind of give it some padding and then we'll want to center it layout gravity center we no longer need this since it's not in a relative layout anymore and then finally we'll want to set its background color to something of a gray. All right, so we're not gonna be able to see it once it's fully there, but it, it's it's there. If, if we look in the document outline, our button's gonna be somewhere around there. All right. Now, there we are, now we have our button. So let's go ahead and come back into our, our actual CS class for fragment three. And here's where the magic's gonna happen. So we're gonna wanna actually first, first let's create a button and let's, Let's do that here and we'll register a click event with it. So we'll do button equals view, find view by ID. It's gonna be a button. And then button fragment four is the one that we want. And then here we'll have a container, okay? So we can actually make the container or we can actually set its ID, okay? So we're gonna wanna actually make the container because we're gonna the we're gonna actually animate this one, all right? So let's go ahead and let's go to instance of the fragment container. So we'll call it fragment for container. And then we'll go ahead and do a find view by ID on that as well. Find view by ID. Let's cast it to a frame layout. And then it's going to be fragment for container. All right. So what we want to do, we actually want to actually add it to, just like how we did in the main activity up here at the top, we want to initially add it, all right? Even though it's going to be hidden, we still want it to be there when we, so that when we call upon it, it will, it will, it'll come up. Close some of this stuff. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we need a transaction. Well, the transaction is actually going to come from the activity. So we are now in a fragment. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's not actually, it's, it's actually pretty trivial. We just call upon our, our parent or our host activity, the one that is actually hosting this fragment. And the way we can do that is just by activity, the activity property, all right? Now, 
with that, we get an instance of the host activity. And notice that the activity is a fragment activity, all right? And that's just enough to actually call the support fragment manager, which by this point, you probably, uh, if you've been watching their videos, you're pretty familiar now. Now that we have a begin transaction, we have a transaction, so that we can actually add the ID. So we, we actually don't have to, we, we could still do this, fragment for container, like we've done in the, in the previous videos. But however, we already have an instance of that, right? So we can kind of, you know, shorthand that and we can actually just do ID because that's all I wanted was the ID. So it gets the ID of that object, which is uh, will suffice. And then we can do new fragment four. And then we can just give it a tag of fragment four. All right. And then what we'll do is call commit, don't forget. Okay, so now down here is where we actually want to register the click event. So the click event is going to want to be, we want to register and this is going to happen. This, what's going to happen here is when we actually click, we want it to pop up. All right. So what we want to happen is we want to actually kind of what we did in the, in the previous tutorials, what we, we use is we use the animations, the XML files. However, in this video, what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to do it by code because we want it to actually happen in a, in a particular event that we want to specify which here is a button click, but of course it can happen anywhere you like or anytime you like. So first let's go ahead and make an interp interpolator. All right, remember the interpolator is kind of what gives it the effect of the, the bouncing and, and, the, and the sliding and all that stuff like we saw in the last video. But here we're actually gonna create one by code. So what we can do is we could do new Android views animations, and then we're gonna choose the overshoot interpolator. And we're gonna give it a value of five, which is called tension. So the higher value, the more it's gonna spring up, okay? Because the overshoot kind of overshoots and then it comes back down. Well, the tension is kind of what really gives it that. So it's gonna, if it, the higher value is gonna really overshoot, it really come back down. But we kind of wanna just give it a subtle overshoot. So we'll give it a value of five. And that's gonna be our interpolator. Now we actually want to animate it up, okay? And remember at this point, the, the, the translation, uh, the, Translation Y is the same value of its height. So it's it's resting right below the screen, all right? So in a sense, it's kind of like right, it's just, it's it's right there. And then only when we actually click it, does it come up. All right? So with that case, what we'll do is knowing that and assuming that, what we can do is uh, come into here and we can actually animate it. So we'll do M fragment container, which remember it's just a view, so we can call the view property animator on it. So we'll do animate, set interpolator. We'll set our interpolator now. And then we'll do dot translation. So we want to actually reanimate the translation. And we want to do a value of negative 200. Because remember, if we do negative 200, it's actually gonna make it a less translation, so therefore it's gonna come up more. So right now I'd say, say it's about, you know, it, the, assuming the density is about 160, uh, it's, it's gonna be at translation 400. And what's gonna happen is gonna be at translation 400. Kind of show this. And then here, about here is about, you know, we wanna animate up about 200 and then zero. And then when it's at zero, it's at zero right here. So the less value, the more it's gonna show. That's why it's gonna be a negative value. So let's come back into our CS and then call upon that. And then we'll do set duration. So we wanna set the duration, it's in milliseconds, so half a second. And that's it. So that's gonna actually animate up from there. All right. So let's go ahead and we're not gonna be able to do any, any of the pulling up, but the user can um, actually you know uh, pull it up in, t in the touch event. but. Let's go in and make sure that it's actually pulling up the way we spoke that it's supposed to. And then we can move on to the touch event and then get that kind of kind of rolling. So the the uh, frame layout, remember, is the one we're animating, and because the fragment is inside of it, what's gonna happen is that the frame layout animates, therefore the fragment animates. So once we start viewing the the frame layout as sort of like a uh, the uh, frame layout is a view, but once we start viewing fragments as, as views, we can start doing some really cool stuff with them. 
So let's go ahead and bring in fragment three. Let's bounce up. All right, so we get a really, really weird kind of kind of feel to it, and it looks like it's just not doing what we expect it to, okay? So the reason why is because we're actually, uh, what I did was I put translate Y, so that's translate Y2, not translate Y by. So it was going to 200 and kind of screwing up. So translate Y by, and that's gonna actually translate it by 200, not to the value 200, which we were doing before. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. And what we should expect to see is it coming up now from the uh, appropriate spot and then it kind of not overshooting itself. So let's go, go into the fragment three where we pull up the fragment four and as you can see, it's coming It's coming up now. It's not going crazy or anything like that. It's coming up the appropriate amount and then shooting back down a little bit and kind of just staying there. So the the view's not in money. Like it's, it's actually gray right now because there actually is no view in it. And the reason why is because we haven't inflated that here, okay? So remember that we made a, we have our fragment four and we have a an XML file for it or an AXML file for it. So let's go ahead and feed it that now so that's actually going to to actually inflate that value so we'll have fragment four and then same over here container false return view and that's actually going to return the view so now it's not just going to be a blank background it's actually going to be a a file that we have that like the the drag me up and then the Xamarin logo and all that. So we should be able to see that now. All right, so that's it. But notice that we can't, of course, pull it up, you know, we don't have that touch. We don't have that touch event uh, yet implemented. So uh, since that's a little bit of a different topic, we're gonna take care of that in the next video is where we're actually going to pull it up and we're gonna let the user fully extend it as much as it, as it, as it can and then slide it back down and then of course get rid of it when they no longer want to see it or no longer need to use the interface anymore. All right, so that's gonna be taken care of in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.